Good afternoon, everybody. Um, at the very outset, um, it's a privilege to be here and to talk to all of you. Uh, I represent uh, Adobe, and we are the associate sponsor for the event. Uh, you know, I just wanted to give a little bit context before I get into what I'm going to talk about. Uh, but from an Adobe standpoint, uh, one of the things that we, we continue to try and do, right, uh, is because we build products that are pretty much what enable a lot of the businesses to be able to do marketing or be able to manage your documents or be able to do ser seriously great engineering design work, right? Uh, we, we consider ourselves almost like an a, a infrastructure enabler, right? So, so one of the things that we continue to push ahead is to keep working with governments and education bodies to ensure that we, we build out the skills for you to be able to consume these technologies so that your business can get better. Uh, just as context, um, Adobe signed an, an agreement with the, uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the Department of uh, Higher Education and Vocational Training um, with, in West Bengal. Uh, we've, tra uh, you know, we, we've trained about 1,500 students in that, in that domain. And we've also trained about 300 teachers on another set of products with, with uh, 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 the next step of training about 34,000 students uh, across the state by the end of next quarter, right? So we're making some significant investment in terms of skills and enablement for you to actually be able to tap into folks that are industry ready and I can add value to your business to be able to help you sell better and be more successful in the business that you've built so uh, with so much of your hard work right so so there is a bunch of things that adobe is doing from a from just being able to create that capacity for you so that you're able to uh, you know take benefit of the products that we've built out um, what i'm going to do over the next 15 20 minutes is to really talk about um, you know, some of the innovation that we've done on uh, generative AI. Uh, and just again, um, you know, just taking a step back, right? AI has been something that's been there in the market for over the last 10, 15 years, right? So whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's machine learning, you've been hearing about that all the time. Uh, what's, what's so different with generative AI and, and what's what's making it so compelling for everybody to think about it. And we think it's especially pertinent for MSMEs to understand what Gen AI is and what it can do to your business such that you can actually take benefit of what Gen AI offers. So if you really think about it, uh, technology till now was something that you needed to be able to write code to, right? Uh, to actually be able to make it do what you, what you needed it to. Uh, what generative technologies is now doing is that it's making it a, it's, it's really, what we, we like to call it lowering the bar, right? So your ability to interact with technology is being made simpler by the day. And that, that's really propelled by generative technologies and that's something that's making a massive difference to what it means to get people more productive, to be able to do things which took days or months or years to do, to do that at the snap of a finger, right? Um, and in, in some senses at the speed of thought, right? So, so generative AI and this, uh, this you know, big leap that, that's being made in the tech world is something that you can benefit across different areas of the business, right? So it could be whether it's, it's with regard to um, you know, 3D design, right? Uh, today, you've got generative technology in 3D design that can help you, right? Or it could be with regard to, say, Photoshop skills, right? For you to actually be able to use Photoshop and leverage Photoshop better. Or it could be about saying, how do I distill a document to be able to figure out what's the most important things of the document and can I just converse with the document like I converse with a person, right? I can ask questions, get answers, m make more sense of that document and be able to quickly be able to derive value out of that document, right? Uh, and, and that power today is available for all of us to, to take benefit of 
And that really is the true power of what generative AI does, right? Uh, and this can have multiple manifestations for your business. So you could like, you could, for example, um, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're somebody in the education space or somebody in the learning space, right? This could be something that could really transform how your students consume the, the information that you put out and how they're able to get better outcomes with that. Uh, or if you're somebody who's running a digital marketing firm or an agency, uh, you know, can you improve your productivity of turnaround time, right? And, and, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the examples that we are experiencing with a whole bunch of different clients, but everybody is, is really looking to, to see how they can take and make the most of what generative AI can offer to supercharge their business, right? So, so with that, let me just... Uh, quickly dive into yeah. okay okay so um so just, just to round up what I just said with regard to what generative AI does, um, so what's the impact of this on businesses and the market, right? Um, this, the, and this, a lot of this is pulled out from a bunch of reports done by McKinsey, done by EY. Uh, there was an ET uh, report that was there. So we've, we've used all of that data to actually give you a sense of what's the opportunity that's ahead of us and, and why it's important for all of us to get really serious and think about Gen AI. And if that's not on your radar, then I think that this slide in itself should catch your attention to want to do it, right? Um, the AI market size is expected to be 407 billion by 2027, right? Um, is, is, is it there yet? No, but it's really quickly getting there, right? And, and so if you get ahead of, of what, where the market's going, you will be in a position to actually be able to capitalize on this $407 billion opportunity. But for that, what it means is that you will need to really start getting on the AI bandwagon and, and start saying, how can you actually build your business or enable your business or supercharge your business, as the case might be, using Gen AI, right? 79% of the leaders are reporting a cost decrease via Gen AI adoption, right? So, so this is proven now that you actually bring down costs. So there was that conversation with, uh, uh, with the previous speaker where, where his assessment was that investment in technology is, is a little harder for people to actually be able to figure out the ROI. Uh, not so much today. Today it's very easy and front and center for you to actually be able to figure out how much of an impact the technology investments are making on your business, right? It could be able to make you go to market faster. And I'll give you an example. We're, talk, we're working with this bank, which, uh, and we're, we're helping them implement uh, generative technologies for them. And what that's doing for them is that it's helping them go to market four weeks quicker than in the previous world. Four weeks, which means that they're ability to generate cash or generate money becomes four weeks earlier, which means that you're adding a month of pure play, you know, billing to the business, right? And assume that you can do this over, you know, 10 different products. That's, that's clearly almost a year of incremental revenue that, can, that you can add to the business just by reducing your time to go to market, right? So, so generative AI has this impact which can really add value and get you to be able to go to market much, much quicker. The AI market in India is expected to be $17 billion. And that's again by 2027, right? Um, and India has the potential to add $359 billion to $438 billion to its GDP in by, just by Gen AI, by 2030, right? So again, staggering numbers, and the reason why I'm sharing these numbers, it can mean nothing to us, but it can also show you 
the significance of the opportunity ahead of us, right? And, and it's really upon us to say, am I going to jump on this bandwagon and am I, am I going to really make the most of this opportunity or am I going to just watch and, and, and say this is not for me, right? Um, that's, that's really left to us. And, but it's important for us to be aware that the opportunity size is continuously expanding for Gen AI. And we think that, you know, if you, if you can get on it and if you can start harnessing the power of what Gen AI brings to your business, you will be served much better and you will be able to serve your customers that much better, right? 90% uh, uh, say Gen AI will be a workforce partner by 2025. 65% of the consumers say that they trust Gen AI. And 64% of the business owners say AI will increase productivity, right? So everything um, is green lighting towards the massive adoption and opportunity of Gen AI, right? But like all good things, um, I guess, um, you know, generative AI all, also carries business risks which you should be aware of. And th these are some things that you should plan for as you look to implement it within your business, right? Um, so, so one of the core things with, uh, with anything that has to do with, with computers or with machines, right, is it's always garbage in, garbage out, right? So, so the big question that you always are worried about is, will your business be protected from issues around copyright, right? Uh, and how do you protect your business and how do you indemnify yourself from that? Uh, the other thing is with regard to, you know, who has access to my data? Is it private? Is, what are the security uh, features that have been implemented? How is it that I'm always protected, right? Um, are there any regulations on Gen AI, right? Because, you know, like a lot of you mentioned, right? What's the, what's, what's the government's point of view on this, right? The, the, the two cents that I have to offer on that, right, is that with a lot of things, wherever you're doing, wherever you're breaking new ground, right? you will see policies will always be two steps behind what you're doing. And that's not because uh, the government's not fast enough or doesn't see it, but the government has to serve the lowest common denominator and that always ensures that it takes time and therefore you'll always seem like if you're in the bleeding edge of anything, any business, you will always seem to be ahead of some of the business laws that the government's put in place, right? So, so that, that's, but that's a key concern and that's something that we all should be very aware of as we embark on this Gen AI journey. Um, how do you enable secure collaboration in this hybrid workplace? And can a company embrace AI as an opportunity and not as a threat, right? So, so a lot of employees and, and, and with any technology, right? Uh, the biggest impacted people with regard to technology are people who are working within an organization, right? And a lot of times, a lot of employees feel like Gen AI is actually going to take away jobs from them, right? Because it'll probably do something much, much quicker, faster, smarter, lesser errors, et cetera, than what an employee can do, right? So there's always a bunch, a whole lot of fear that people have with regard to what Gen AI is going to do. But but end of the day, um, the way we, we believe uh, about this, um, and, and I'll, I'll talk about that, right? So, so what does it mean for small businesses, right? Um, so the big question is how small businesses define productivity, right? 45% uh, of the respondents that we spoke to, uh, and this was a survey that we did across about 1,000 um, SMEs uh, in India, um, in, in Brazil, in South Africa, and, and a few other countries, right? So 45% of the respondents associate productivity with impactful work over generating income or doing more work faster, right? So impact becomes a key driver of productivity, right? So, so people are not, and, and this is contrary to popular perception, right? And, and, and clearly, uh, the smaller the business, the more people are focused on impact. And, and it clearly resonated in the survey that, that most of the employees also feel that the impact is what really is a measure, measurable outcome, right? 58% of the SMBs lose two to four hours of productivity due to bad technology, right? Uh, so any of you who are not using technology, this is a serious wake-up call, right? That you must implement technology and you must um, really get, help your employees to get more productive, right? And, and for 
all those who are looking to do that. Our friend here is a consultant who could probably help you to, do, to actually make some of those things come to life, right? Small businesses are playing digital catch up, right? And, and so business owners are, are aware uh, that 85% of the businesses are playing catch up on technology, right? Because, uh, you know, investments, priority, what do you prioritize? Do you prioritize over today, tomorrow? How do you do this? Do you prioritize payroll? Do you prioritize vendor payments? Do you prioritize investment on, on technology? And so, so there are multiple decisions and questions that all of you grapple with, and that's understandable. But, you know, the fact is that 85% of small businesses believe that technology can help them be more productive, and it's really left to you to actually make those hard decisions and, 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 and hopefully make a good impact to your business, right? And 85% of the employees cite technology helping them work faster and smarter and focus more on impactful work, right? So, so that's a massive, massive opportunity for us to actually start looking at technology in a very different light and say, you know, here's an opportunity for us to make that investment such that we're able to help make our employees and our businesses grow faster. What is Adobe's approach to generative AI, right? Um, so, so what Adobe has done is that we, um, you know, we, we've implemented generative AI uh, in our flagship product called Creative Cloud, which is basically, and you might have heard about products like Photoshop uh, or Premiere Pro, or if you're in the, in the, in the digital marketing space, uh, you know, Lightroom, After Effects, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what we've done is that we've, we've got our generative AI, we call it Firefly, and we've embedded that into all our products, right? So today, um, you know, something that would take you, say, two hours in Photoshop to do if you're a power user can be done with just a prompt using Firefly. Right? So we've significantly managed to bring down time for you to actually be able to do some of those things that are important to your business. Right? But, but now the question is that how are we getting the data? How are we using that data? Are we using your information to train our models? Because all of these suddenly start becoming important questions. Right? So the approach that Adobe is, has uh, adopted is to train our entire Gentech stack only on, only on data that is owned by us or is copyright free, right? So, so what, we, what we commit to you is to say that we will not use your um, data to train our models and we will only use data that's either owned by us, licensed by us, or it's a license-free data, right? So that's how we have, we have chosen to, to implement our view of generative AI, right? Our entire model, right, is again built on this custom framework, and the entire training and, and readiness uh, is built on these custom trained models, right? So, so, so Adobe has Adobe is built that, which is in a completely proprietary manner, but ensuring that your business is always protected and is always safe, right? Um, the interfaces, right? So, so we are, we're saying that these are going to be available across all interfaces to you, um, whether it's Creative Cloud, Document Cloud, or Experience Cloud, and we will make the same promise hold true for anything, right? Um, and we've got a very strong uh, ethics committee on, on generative AI, internally for the company and all our products that are coming up with generative AI capabilities has to go through that ethics framework, right? So, so this is to basically tell you that Adobe's got a very unique approach to generative AI and we think that, you know, your businesses will definitely benefit from it. Um, you know, um, the only piece that I'll highlight of this slide, right, is uh, around Acrobat Gen AI. How many of you are familiar with Adobe Acrobat. Good to see a few hands. Thank you. Um, so, so till now, um, you know, um, when when we launched Acrobat in um, 1980, we actually open sourced it within two years of launching the product, right? Uh, and so you will see a lot of different versions of PDF. So the standard became PDF, and Acrobat is one of the renditions of PDF, right? And so, um, so, so that that was that was done by Adobe. Uh, to ensure that 
everybody can can get the benefit of what Acrobat brings to bear, and and there is a large amount of data that actually sits and large amount of document set that moves on PDF, right? And the benefit of doing it on PDF vis-a-vis -vis any other document format is that PDF has three important things, right? It's got a header, it's got, it's got entire text, and it's got this ability to have categorization of your data, right? Now, what these three things do for your, for your documents is that your documents suddenly can be made alive in different scenarios, right? So if you're a business that's processing, for example, loans, right? Or for example, uh, you know, admissions. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a school or a college, right? And you're doing admissions, right? So you get a lot of the documents. How do you start making sense of it? If it's in a PDF format, you'd be able to do that much, much quicker, right? What we've done, or, or say for example, if you're a legal firm or you're a chart accounting firm, right? You've got, you get a whole bunch of documents that you have to pass through, right? And, and can, you, can you make sense of that much, much quicker? The answer is absolutely yes. So with, with Acrobat, what we've done is, now we've built in the generative AI capability in Acrobat, wherein you can ask the document questions and it will start giving you answers. And it will keep, you know, so, and the beauty with the answers that you get from that document is that it will also give you the reference of those answers, right? So, so, so if, you, if you do any query on the web, right, whether it's, um, uh, you know, any, any publicly available um, uh, generative AI service, right, what you will see is that you don't typically get the source of that information, right? Uh, what Acrobat's done is that it's ensured that we will, for every, for every answer that we give you, we will also give you the source of that such that you can reference it out. This is to ensure that everything that, that you generate using generative AI from Adobe is always secure and it's something that your business can bet on, right? So, so but, but today that's available in uh, Acrobat it's called the AI assistant. Uh, what, we, what we're doing um, you know, in the coming few months is that it'll give you the ability to actually run this entire thing across multiple documents, uh, thereby you being able to search multiple documents and still be able to get really simple and concise answers. Think about you know, if you're a legal firm and you're looking to go through multiple different uh, you know, laws or, or statutes that the government's got, uh, you, you'll quickly be able to get answers to that and you'll be able to work much, much quicker with that, right? Uh, and that's something that's, that's, going to be, that's going to be built into uh, the, the AI assistant in, in Acrobat, right? So, so there are lots of things that are, that are coming. We spoke a little bit about some of the Creative Cloud products. Uh, we've also got a product called Substance, which basically helps you with 3D design. Uh, and and there, is, there is generative technologies that we've built into that also, thereby enabling you to be able to do painting much quicker or, uh, you know, modeling a 3D design much, much quicker, right? So, so, so there is a whole bunch of things that we've done from a generative technology standpoint. Uh, and I, I, I have more slides to talk through, but I choose not to primarily because what I wanted to do was I wanted to leave you with this, uh, with this framework for you to think about generative, generative technology uh, and understand how Adobe is approaching it and encourage all of you as business owners and business leaders to start putting together a strategy to put generative AI to work in your businesses, right? Because, you know, you cannot... Um, the the way, way I'd encourage us to think about this, right, is that... Uh, you know, today, if you really look at it, how do, you, how do you get to market, right? At one point in time, where you were located was a big differenti differential advantage, right? You had ports, you had access to airports, et cetera, et cetera. Today, with the internet, a lot of that has been democratized, right? You could be sitting in Siliguri or, you know, uh, any other remote corner of, of the state, and you'll still be able to market your goods and wares to somebody in, say, Deloitte. Right? Or somebody in, um, in Detroit or somebody in Manhattan, right? How does that happen? It's because of what the internet allows us to do, right? And, and to be able to encash on this ability, right? 
we think that generative technologies can really help you. I spoke a little bit about what we're doing with the government of West Bengal with regard to skilling. So you will not be challenged to find people with the ability to be able to do this for your business, right? So, so suddenly we, we, we're helping you unlock capacity with people who are from West Bengal who, who are studying here to actually be able to bring that business value to your business, right? So, so, so we're creating the capacity, we've got the products, right? Um, and, and sometime next week or the week after, we will be releasing an offer through the, through the good folks at ET, for, especially for people who have attended this session, such that you can take benefit of these technologies at a price that's, that's really competitive, right? So, so we, will, we will make the product available, we'll, we'll make uh, you know, the, the people capable to be able to use that product, and we'll give you a special sweet offer for you to actually look at looking, making, making more use of it, right? Uh, I wanted, I wanted you guys to, to, um, to get familiar with how we think about it. Um, I understand that some of this might have been a little, um, you know, a, a little more Adobe centric rather, rather than what you were expecting. Uh, but, but I tried, we tried to try and simplify it as much as possible. I hope it was useful. Um, and we really look forward to helping your business be more successful. And I wish you all the very best in your journey and, and, and thank you for taking the time out. Appreciate thank it. you so much, Mr. Joseph, for uh, taking us through your presentation and uh, explaining us more about how and why is uh, digital media important for growing your business. Yes, sir, we were not expecting questions here, but still, yes, because you're, you raised your hand, so maybe one question. Can we take that offline? Or, okay, we're doing it here. Hi, myself is Arjit Bhattacharya, founder of India's one of the first game development company. My quick question to you is, uh, when you create a policy that the copyrighted material will be actually owned by the creator, and if it is not copyrighted, it will be probably co-owned. I have read your uh, details. How about some companies actually going for uh, NFT, securing that particular object, and then coming back to your software and then utilizing it? Do you have such kind of structure? So, um, so you know, I mean, um, where you, or, or what, platform or framework you want to use to secure your data is, is your choice, right? If you use NFT, blockchain, what have you. I mean, you know, you could use multiple different technologies, right? Uh, depending on what you, what you do to actually secure it, that's your call, right? What we at our end would do is that if, the, if that particular data is not owned by us, we will not use it to train any of our models, right? We can help you as a user of the product can, can, can use our product to be able to make whatever changes you want to do to your product, but that still continues to be yours, and we will not have any say on the matter, or we will not use it or, or utilize it again. Does that, does that kind of answer your question? It's fine. I, I actually represent a very large group of uh, indie developers, so it's a question which is raising in multiple groups. Thank okay. you for the answer. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Sir, I request you to please raise the stage for a while. Yeah, and just this, one, one small, one oh, very small where, question. Where are you, yeah, sir? Yeah, yeah, here. Okay, it's okay. Me. Yeah. Uh, see, I'm, I'm a subscriber of your uh, Adobe and I'm a very extensive user, of course, my, mainly from the business point of view, uh, not, not from actually the designing point of view. But what I find is that merging of the documents in your Adobe is still a bit difficult, unless I'm using some third-party software like I love PDF and all, all that, okay. So could you just please uh, uh, say a few words on this or if, if, if you could make it a more simpler, you know, if you could ma make it a little bit simpler so on, so on your main screen yeah. for, you know, mer merging so, the so, mer so merging documents is actually one of the core benefits that uh, Acrobat brings to bear, right? Okay. Um, the feedback that we've had with, from people is that it's, it's very simple and intuitive to use. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd love to know more about the version of the product that you're using. It the latest be. one, because I get it on a monthly basis. I'm a sub subscriber. Right, right, and so, 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 so I'll need to understand that a little okay. better for me to be able to give you a more coherent answer. Okay. But, but merging of documents is a core functionality that Acrobat engine and business rests No, on, I right, do sir. it very easily when I use those th third-party, you know, add-ons like I and, love PDF and, and, and all. And, and <laughs> but then unfortunately here I'm not able to. Sure, mm -hmm. happy to speak offline.